So I am going to do a bit of online polling with you because I'm, it's not about just you getting to know me. It's going to be me about getting to know my audience. And I guess we're in a technology conference. We should be using the technology to make these sessions a bit more interactive, shouldn't we? I think that's a, a good idea. Um, so can you go to Slido, please, on your devices? Do you, does everyone know Slido? So if you look up Slido on um, online, and the event code is 7073, please. Now, you won't be able to see it on the screens, unfortunately, but you will be able to see your results on your screens. So I'm looking around of people on there. Am I getting some nods? Let's have a look. Okay, right. So, okay, the first thing to say is you are all wrong because the right answer is cricket, but we'll leave that for the moment. Um, now I want you to just, um, let's have a little idea of what you like about work. So I've used the word, what do you love about work? But please tell me what you like about work. Give me a, let's try and find a word cloud that will tell us what people think is important. In one word, describe what you love. Salary, energy, okay. Challenging, people. Days out to Manchester. <laughs> it's not one word. <laughs> Innovation, culture, problem solving, balance, people. People's coming up. People's come up three times. Val values. Interesting. Problem solving, culture. Interesting. Salary, energy, holidays, <laughs> holiday, <laughs> customers, <laughs> customers, okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay, let's say that's about right. So, the most interesting thing for me on that is if we think about what's actually most popular, people. We're at a technology conference, but lots of people come to work for the people. So that's interesting. Um, now I'm going to find out a little bit about your organisation, please. So what's the annual turnover of your organisation? Oof. Okay. So an interesting spread, but there's a lot of heavy hitters in the room, aren't there? There's lots of people who have got a turnover of more than 500 million. Um, so Pennine Care, uh, average NHS organisation, turnover of roughly 240 million pounds. Okay, so that tells you where we're at on that particular um, metric. Um, let's see now how many staff. Sorry. How many staff do you employ? So I'm expecting there's going to be a wide range there. Again, some big organisations in the room, really big. And my organisation, Pennine Care, just over 5,000 staff, just over 5,000. Um, then, how many staff does your organization employ? Sorry, no, I've just done that one, sorry, <laughs> apologies. <laughs> okay. This is the last one. I want you to tell me how digitally mature you think your organisation is, however you wish to define it. Do you think you're brilliant? Do you think you've got a way to go? <laughs> how many stars are you going to give yourselves? Okay. 
Okay, so we've got a range of different, quite a lot of people in the sevens out of tens. Um, I would suggest my own organization. Um, if we look it up on the uh, uh, digital maturity index that the NHS has, we're down the bottom. Um, I think we're around 200 out of 230. Not great when we measure ourselves against objective measures. But we do do lots of good stuff, and that's what I'm going to tell you about now. So, this is a little bit about me. So, you've kindly shared with me everything that you know about yourself. Um, this is a bit of my background, and I think what's important, what I always like to understand about speakers is where do they come from? So, are you a tech head? Did you, were you originally an engineer and you sat in a, or did, were you in a service desk? Me, I was a software development engineer. Um, I've always worked in healthcare. I had five years at iSoft. So iSoft were, when I originally joined them, part of KPMG. Um, they were a management buyout of a million pounds by, so that was 1998 and 2003. They were listed on the stock market at 100 million pounds. So they grew like bilio in the time I was with them. And we were developing products, patient administration systems for hospitals. Um, so one of my key lovely things that happens to me is I go to Imperial College with my mum because she had a heart attack and had a heart problem and look behind at what the receptionist is doing and she's checking in the patients and she's using the software I designed 20 years ago. That's nice. That's a really nice thing to have. Um, I've worked in lots of different roles. I was a contractor for a while. Um, lots and lots of different things. Mental health and community is kind of where I found myself, where I kind of Actually, I think I am uh, most sympathetic to. Mental health has a specific kind of way of looking at people, much more holistic than acute care. So I really like that. And I've done lots and lots of different things. So this is Pennine Care. Um, this slide's a little bit out of date. So this is like, I guess, April 2019, end of the financial year. These are all the things we do. So we do, we have Cisco phones. We've got interoperability, we've got an um, integration engine. Obviously, we've got a wide area network to service all our wards. We are an organization of 34 wards, ah, but they're not on a single site. They are distributed across the east sort of Manchester. So you've got some in Bury, you've got some in Rochdale, you've got some in, we're actually a district general hospital spread all over the place. Um, and that obviously requires a network. We do IT support and education. We do a lot of clinical change management. That is one of the key things that my organisation is about because what else are we going to do? That's what technology is supposed to help us with. I think the piece that Patricia was talking about before will be around our particularly good uh, information team who are doing a great job of the data warehouse. I think uh, our, a gentleman earlier, the HMLC, guy talking about AI was talking about how important data warehousing is and how important getting the data out of system. It still surprises me when I'm talking to suppliers and I say, that's absolutely fine. I love your product. I need the data out of it. And they go, ooh, ooh, ah, sorry, no, you can't have the data out of it. And I have to point out to them at that point, it's my data. It's not your data. So you're going to give it to me. Um, because I need to put it into the data warehouse and crunch it against everything else in the organisation because otherwise I can't build an accurate picture of the organisation. Um, we do lots of systems management because systems management is about making sure that the identity of people is correct and doing all those things and making sure that we're not hiring people who actually we don't know who they are. Um, got a team, this is what I received when I arrived. I had a lot of um, fixed term staff, that's changed now, so, um, but it's a team of roughly 100. This is the number of sites, we've got 250 sites across six boroughs across Manchester. Um, 5,000 employees, we serve 1.3 million people um, in the east of Manchester um, with mental health and community health services. Interestingly, while we have 5,000 employees, we have 7,000 accounts. Um, the difference between that is because 
We have social care staff who log into our systems. We have GPs who log into our systems. We have acute care staff who log into our systems to understand what a particular patient might need from us or what discussions they've had with us. Um, we have a wide suite of devices. I think some of the, th these have changed slightly. We've moved the desktops down and we're much more into the laptop area now. We've probably got 2,000 laptops and um, probably only around 4,000 desktops. Um, we have over 40 clinical and corporate systems, all of which we've got to get into the data warehouse because we need to get that data out and make it into something useful. This is a picture of the various projects that we've got in the, or, or have had. Um, one of them is, say, the Paris Child Health. So Paris Child Health is an interesting one. Hands up if you've got children. Hands up if you've ever seen the Red Book. You know what the Red Book is. You know the, <laughs> oh dear. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the red book is for immunisations and vaccinations for your kids. Um, we inherited um, four separate systems that ran across Manchester where people would schedule those appointments for people. So you've got to come in and you've got to get your three in one, your four in one, your five in one, all that stuff. Um, we had to push that into one system for patients who were moving around Manchester um, and quite a complex piece of work because it was about immunizations and vaccinations and guess what they change every year because you get new ones if you didn't know there is now an HPV um, vaccination for boys so that effectively that protects women when they have sex later so um, that's another thing that would come into that so that's a that's a, a technically difficult project because it's about making sure that all the immunisations for all 18-year-olds over that period are consistent and well-managed. Um, we have an EPR, is an electronic patient record. We've got that as a rollout across our estate. We have audiology systems that we've managed to squeeze from three into one. There's a lot of rationalisation that goes on. So, um, this picture is really about roughly, what I'm trying to illustrate is where we do our services. Bury, Rochdale, Oldham, Thameside, Stockport and Trafford. Okay, so that's where we provide services to. Um, I use the analogy, my chief exec came in and um, wanted to use the analogy of Ernest Shackleton, that we have an impossible journey to go on and, and who's up for it. Um, I don't like the boat analogy for an organisation. We are like a flotilla. We're the Dunkirk flotilla, that's what we are. We've got lots of little boats. Some of these boats are great. Some of these boats need a little bit of tending and help because they're stuck in the back end of Bury. Um, and there's one poor lady who's trying to check in 15 patients and the um, queue is out the door and the computer system doesn't work sometimes. That's the kind of challenge that we have. So, collaboration. That's the purpose of the talk today. Um, for me, we've got to start off with some common tools because if we're going to have collaboration both inside my organisation, we also need to have it outside the organisation. So I'm not going to move away from something like Windows, nor am I going to move something away from something like Microsoft Office. I could get very funky. I could decide to go to Google Docs. Wouldn't that be free? Wouldn't that be great? Yes, but then when that spreadsheet comes in from the Department of Health that says we need your long-term plan, we're not going to be able to read it and that's not going to be any good for us. Unfortunately, the public sector does, and I don't know if there's other public sector people in, around and they may not agree with this, but it runs on that Excel spreadsheets, actually. That's pretty much what most of the information um, goes through. One of the things that we have is NHS Mail. NHS Mail, so here's a great innovation that was done oh, probably 10, 15 years ago under the much maligned national programme. A single mail system for the NHS. I was very lucky, I was at the start of that, so I am chris.reynolds at nhs.net. I'm not chris.reynolds4 at nhs.net. Um, I'm very proud of that. Um, but what that does is it provides really secure 
email across the NHS that you can send patient information on. Okay? Not your own exchange server that when it exchanges information with the next exchange server has to go out over the internet. It doesn't do that. It's great. It's clinically safe. And even better, it's free. Oh my word. So, of course, all my colleagues in all those acute organisations have gone out and used it, haven't they? No. No. They've still got their exchange servers because some people don't like chris.reynolds at nhs.net. What they want is chris.reynolds at acute trust, that's fantastic, .net because it's about branding. Um, so that's why you get into some of those discussions. But also, of course, what that allows me to do in terms of NHS mail is I can share my calendar with pretty much anyone in the NHS. GPs, anybody. Why not? That means that I can schedule appointments with people outside my organisation really, really easily. Fantastic. But not universally adopted. So, that's the first thing. Have some common tools. Second thing is, let's invest in sharing information. So, Paris is our electronic record. So, that's, first of all, that's sharing information between teams that do completely different things. So, we have a patient record for somebody who perhaps may need audiology services. Um, and that's a really bad example because that's not in Paris. But let's say health visiting. So, your health visitor comes out to see you. That's in Paris. Also, what will be in Paris is your mental health record. Okay? So, because they would need to know that, wouldn't they? And we provide both sets of services. It doesn't mean that you get instant access to everything because we have security mechanisms within that that mean that actually we can provide care appropriately and we can control things. We also have a Greater Manchester Integrated Digital Care Record. Hands up if you're in Greater Manchester. You know, Greater Manchester resident, your record's probably going to be in there because it's built on GP records. That's great because what that means is that when you're seen at a local A&E department, they can log into that and get all your history. My mental health clinicians can log into it and see all your history. It's really useful for them to see what's happened in those different organisations. We also have the child protection information system. What's that for? Well, that's for, unfortunately, there are people who have children who don't care for them particularly well. And one of the ways they like to do that is they take them every time they get hurt to different A&E departments. Because they're a bit malicious, unfortunately. The child protection information system means that every time that you go to an A&E department, that is maintained and so you can see that and you can start to see the pattern of those um, admissions. We also now have, after what? I don't know, this is a new, a new thing that's happened over the last four or five years. We have a professional record standards body which is defining what our clinicians um, have to exchange in certain scenarios. And that's incredibly useful because if I ask five doctors what information they need to exchange, they'll give me five different answers. They don't have a common data set. Medical knowledge doesn't stand still. It keeps on going and going and going. So this helps us to make sure that our electronic systems are well maintained and managed. And we can challenge them a bit and go, your professional, so if you're a GP, your professional body says this is the data set. There's then no argument. Otherwise, if I say it, I'm the tech head. What do I know about clinical care? I know nothing. So, um, next step to collaborate. Have a strategy, not a religion. Um, the reason that I say that is, so my, one of my strategy things is that I don't want clinicians to have to enter information about the same patient twice. Because it doesn't make any sense, does it? You wouldn't do that. However, I have a set of clinicians who have come to me in the last 12 months and said, that's exactly what we want to do. The reason they want to do it is because they've got the GP record over here and our record over here. They want to maintain our record, but they want the GP to have this information absolutely in their face, not hidden somewhere down in a, another bit of the record. 
and they're willing to do that. Now, I don't think that's the right thing. Strategically, I'd like to push it out from one system into another system. That requires me to um, be able to lean on that supplier of that GP system that I have no contractual relationship with. So it's probably a non-starter right there. But fundamentally, the users on the ground are happy to do that because they believe they can get benefit out of it. So whilst my strategy is to say, don't dual enter, actually, there are exceptions. And we need to learn from the users, not just have a religion. Um, most of my time in terms of collaboration is spent with other CIOs and with, other, with the chief execs, either formal or informal meetings. It is a people sport. It's a relationship sport. It does not work unless you have good quality relationships with people. I spend so much time, and I think, you know, if I'd asked myself 30 years ago as a bit of a software engineer, what's the most important thing about what you're going to do in 30 years? I don't think I'd have said that. I'd have said, oh, it's all about the technology. It's really important. The technology is really important. I need to get the technology right, and then it all will be fine. No, actually, we need informal um, relationships with people in order to make the technology work. I have lots of levels of collaboration to do. So, if I go back to, let's, let's go back to this. So each of these areas has their own strategy about how they're going to deliver healthcare. They've each got, because one of the things about um, how we deliver healthcare and social care is we want to give local communities control, because that's when it works. That means, oh God, I nearly went there. Um, that means that, of course, I've got to engage with all of those people for mental health. So there'll be people in here, in Berry, who have specific things that they specifically want to do. And I've got to make sure that I'm collaborating with them and helping them. I've then got Greater Manchester. Um, Steve Dobson was here, um, but he's not at the moment. So Greater Manchester, at the Greater Manchester level, um, if people have heard of Devo Mank, Devo Mank is around uh, giving Manchester the money that it needs for health and social care as one thing to choose to do with what it will. Um, that has given us the Greater Manchester Integrated Digital Care Record. Fantastic, but I need to be collaborating at that level. I've got to collaborate with my local organisations, my acute providers, my GPs. I've got to collaborate with organisations that do the same as I do, mental health organisations. And finally, I've got to collaborate with all these people at national level. NHS Digital, NHS Improvement, NHS England, NHS X now, thank you, Matt Hancock, and the CQC, which is the Care Quality Commission, who will come in every now and again and just check we're doing the right thing. So, the final step around collaboration. Um, I'm a big believer in making sure that people understand we're doing good work. It's not enough to sit in the back room and do great work. You have to go out and tell people about it. Because if you don't tell people about it, they don't believe that you're doing good work because you've never told them. <laughs> that means that, you know, I put staff forward for that, for that award. I've got an award winner in the room. Um, put staff forward for that award. Again, fantastic. I myself was nominated through the CIO networks. All fantastic. It all raises the profile. I, I think one of the things that in the public sector we're very reticent about is actually selling ourselves. That's what I view this as. So, six steps to collaboration. Um, does anyone remember Shawadi Wadi? Six steps to heaven? Five steps to heaven? No, okay. I'm showing my age, right. Embrace common tools. So wherever there are common tools, use them. Invest in sharing information. You've got to, because that, that will help you in the public sector, generally. I think one of the things that's distinctive for me here is I'm not trying to get a competitive advantage over other organisations. Um, a strategy, not a religion. So be prepared to compromise on certain use cases. Make sure your network, your informal network, is robust. So make sure you're putting the effort into it. Ensure that you're doing it at lots of different levels. 
and then make sure that what you're saying is credible because you're comparing yourself against the industry. Now, one last thing. So that's the collaboration piece. This is the, well, it's CIO Inspired. This is the inspirational piece. Anybody know what that date is? What's that date? Right, okay. So what you won't know, sorry? Fantastic. So what you won't know is Pennine Care provides the counselling services for all of the victims of the Manchester attack. Okay? Here's the next thing. As part of that, our service has used virtual exposure therapy. So if you're a victim of the Manchester Arena attack, you may want to go back to Manchester Arena and see a band. But going into that environment may trigger you and may mean that you can't go there and you don't want to go there. So, leading consultant who leads that service, did he talk to IT? Did he L? He went out and bought a really high quality phone. And then he went and bought an Oculus Rift and he put the, the Rift in the phone. Fantastic. And so now when he sat counselling somebody, he can start to show them the environment where the bomb took place and they can see if they're triggered because you have to go through that as part of the exposure therapy and this is something that didn't happen 20 years ago didn't do any of that couldn't do technology wasn't available okay so now he's got actually on a phone that he bought himself with an oculus rift a way of exposing patients to that in a 360 way and helping them with their recovery fantastic Absolutely brilliant use of technology. Um, biggest killer of men under the age of 45, 16 per day, is suicide. suicide. Okay, so does that affect the people in this room then? How many people? Uh, personally, I know two gentlemen who've committed suicide in my life. Yeah? That is an epidemic at the moment, really, and it's hidden. Um, just to be, just for some background information, the amount of money spent on uh, mental health research is 22 times less than that spent on cancer. Because it's not as glamorous, is it, really, if I'm honest. Um, but what can we do about that? Well, if you've got 20 minutes when you get home tonight, go on the Zero Suicide Alliance, and there's some training you can do, everybody can do, so that they can notice when someone is struggling. Really, really useful. You could, so that's not medical. That's not medical training. That's just ordinary training. So everyone in this room could actually go away and do that. Not a problem. That's something you couldn't have done 20 years ago. So... Um, my conclusion, and then I'll take some questions. Please use the training. The Shuri Network. Um, I've put that up there because the Shuri Network <laughs> are... Does anyone know who Shuri is? Who's seen Black Panther? Black Panther? So Black Panther, in Black Panther there is a lady who is the technology expert. And she's Shuri. And the Shuri Network is about getting ladies from a, a black and ethnic minority background involved in healthcare informatics, in technology. Um, so that's what it's for. So please follow it. Please participate it. Please promote it. Um, that's my Twitter handle. That's my LinkedIn profile. Please feel free to con connect with me and I'll take any questions at that point.